What's going on guys? Kurt here from 5 Minute Guitar. Today I'm going to give you a quick 10 minute warm up routine that you can use at the beginning of your practice sessions every day. And it's just a well rounded routine that's going to work on all your core skills as a guitarist. If you do this every day before you start working on your songs, it's just going to get your fingers flowing and moving. And over time, it's really going to clean up your fundamentals, which is going to make you a better guitarist and make it easier to learn songs and sound better when you play. All right, so let's get into it. In this warm up routine, I'm going to cover five different sections of guitar playing. And each of them is only going to take you a few minutes each, but you work on this quickly in the beginning and it's just going to make you a well rounded guitarist. So today we're going to start with hand flexibility and strength, and then we're going to move into chords, then strumming, and then picking, and finally bar chords. So this routine is designed for beginners and intermediate guitarists, and for each of the sections I'm going to show you the beginner simple way to do this, and then how you can modify the, each of these exercises as you get more advanced so that it's still useful for you as you progress. All right, so first things first is gonna be hand stretches. Now, a lot of you have probably never done any sort of hand stretches for your guitar playing, but starting with some quick hand stretches is a great way to just get your fingers nimble and loose and the blood flowing, and you're gonna be able to immediately feel how your hands can just move faster. So first thing you wanna do is just gently press each of your fingers back to work on your backward flexibility there. You can do this for both hands, and this is all you need to do, just really quickly like that. Get them a little loose. Then, you want to go in between each of your fingers here. Use your other hand to kind of stretch them out width-wise. And that's really going to help your flexibility so that you can reach far frets and play those difficult chords. So just do that for a few seconds on each. Make sure not to press too hard. Just a gentle stretch to widen out your fingers there. And that's going to give them a lot more flexibility. Same thing, do this with our other hand to loosen that up. There you go. Give them a little shake. Then the next thing is to rub, give your muscles a little bit of massage. We want to get the side of the hand there. And then go basically in between where each of your fingers are. Give it a nice gentle rub on both the top and bottom of the hand there. You can feel where your bones are. You want to go in between those where the actual muscle is. And then on your thumb there. And just do that a few times. Then go to the other hand. We're just going to rub out this big muscle here. And then in between each of our fingers where your hand muscles lie. And then finish off on the side there. And this one's one of my favorites because you can immediately feel after how your hands are just looser. Then finally, last one is we're just going to give our forearms a little massage because we get a lot of forearm tension when we're playing guitar. And you can use these midway through any of your uh, guitar playing sessions as you start to notice your hands just get more tense. I'll stop mid-practice session whenever I'm playing if my forearms get too tense and just loosen them out a bit and you're going to be surprised how much easier it is to play after that. So you just want to rub the muscles on the top of your forearm there and on the bottom there. And again, you only need a few minutes for each of these. Roll out your wrists a little bit and then we're done. And my hands feel a lot looser already. I'm sure yours will too after you've done this and it's actually really going to help make it a lot easier to switch, move your fingers a lot faster. These are also nice because you don't need your guitar to do this so that if you're just sitting in your kitchen or something, feel free to use these stretches. All right, now our fingers are all warmed up and ready to go. Now we're gonna go on to chord switches. So the main goal of this is to just work on first memorizing our chords, and then once we've got them memorized, work on increasing the speed that we can switch between. So all we're gonna do here is play each of these chords once before switching. So I'm gonna do G, E minor, C, D, a minor, A, and then E. So this is what it's gonna look like. I'm just gonna do this at a medium speed. Feel free to go faster or slower depending on what you're comfortable with. And just like that, that's all you're trying to do. And how you change this based on whether you're intermediate or beginner is you just play as slow or as fast as you're able to. So as a beginner, you're probably going to be going more. At about that speed. And then you can work on this every day and eventually you'll be able to do it much faster.
and you can see how that can quickly become a challenge. So that's your next step. Just do that a few times, two or three times is enough to just kind of work on those changes. And if you're an intermediate and you're working on some other chords beyond these basics, still work on the fundamental chords because you really need to always get better at these ones, but then add them in if you're working on any sevenths or different minors or anything, add them in at the end of that. And then just do that two or three times just to work on these chord changes. So moving on, next step is going to be the same thing, but we're gonna add in arpeggiation of the chords. So I'm gonna do the same order, G, E minor, C, D, A minor, A, E, but I'm gonna pick the strings out of the chord individually and then play the chord. So what I mean, it's gonna sound like this. So just like that, and the point of this one is to work on your accuracy and being able to pick out these chords clearly. So if you find that you've got some buzzing here, then readjust your fingers before moving on. This exercise isn't about speed, it's about getting nice clear ringing chords. So readjust your fingers, try it again, wait till everything's ringing out nicely, and then move on to the next chord. And if you run into buzzing, just readjust and keep going. That's how you want to start at as a beginner. Same thing with intermediates. Now you can work on your speed, but speed while maintaining clarity. Because it, does, it doesn't do you any good if you can do this. Really fast, if it's still sloppy, your chords aren't going to be nice like that. And you can add in any other chords that you're working on again on top of this at the end of this one but you want to increase your speed as you're comfortable with it while still playing accurately. Just like that, you can work on being able to play that quicker, but still keeping it smooth and accurate because it doesn't matter if you've got fast chords if they sound ugly and buzzy. All right, so now we're gonna work on some strumming. So starting off, we're gonna focus on just the right hand, getting that flowing nicely without worrying about any chord switches because we've got to work on the two independently to be able to put them well together. So start, I'm just going to grab a G chord, whatever chord you want, it's totally fine, doesn't really matter, we're not going to be switching it. And then I'm going to play one, two, and, and four, and, as my strumming pattern. One, two, and, and four, and, one, two, and, and four, and. And then just practice this to try and get into the flow of this with your right hand, and again, Work on it slowly to fast, depending on how comfortable you are with this. You can practice it with the metronome as well. I'm not gonna do it here just for time's sake, but it's a great tool to be able to work on your timing. So just try that on a G chord and then work on that strumming pattern. And then just get into the flow of that. If you're more of a beginner, then you can take it nice and slow. Try that out for a minute or two, and then I'm gonna to switch to a C chord, and my strumming pattern this time is going to be one and, and, and four. One and, and, and four. One and, and, and four. So that's the ands of beats one, two, and three. I'm giving this a nice offbeat rhythm so that you can really work on that up strumming, because that's what a lot of people struggle with, is getting the up strumming offbeat timing down pat. This helps to try with a metronome, and then you can work on your offbeat strumming. So try counting that out and playing it without the counting, just to kind of get the idea. One and, and, and four. One and, and, and four. Play that, try and get the groove of it, feel it, and do whatever speed you can do, slow, or as you get better, you can do... All right, now I'm gonna switch back and play that first strumming pattern now on a chord progression of G, E minor, C, D. So our strumming pattern was one, two, and, and four, and. And then I'm just gonna switch between those four chords. And 
once again, play that slow or fast, depending on how comfortable and how advanced you are. Next up, I'm going to use that same chord progression on the second strumming pattern. Pause the video and play that for a few minutes, and then we're going to try switching between these two strumming patterns so that we can work on when strumming pattern would change in a different section of the song. Same chord progression throughout, but we're going to switch from that first strumming pattern to the second one. And there you go, so you can see that I played the first strumming pattern on the first run through of the G minor CD, and then on the second run through I switched up the strumming pattern and then I just alternate back and forth. That's a great way to work on transitioning strumming patterns. You can use these ones or if you've got other ones that you're working on right now, you can substitute them in these place. If you are a beginner and your chords are still slow or buzzing a lot, then you're going to be perfect for my 14 day chord challenge, which is going to fix your chords and get you strumming smoothly on all these basic chords so that you can just play songs nicely. You can check that out in the link in the description below this video. All right, so now we're gonna do a few quick scales just to get our fingers moving and work on picking out individual notes. Scales are useful because if you learn a scale, then you've got a bunch of notes that you can use when you go to start jamming and improvising on your own. If you pretty much just play within the scale, then it'll sound good most of the time over that same chord progression. So we're gonna start off with a nice simple classic blues scale, which is an E minor pentatonic, and we're gonna play it like this. And then on the way down. There you go, that's a great one to work on. And make sure that you're always alternating picking, which means that you're going down on the first stroke and then up on the next stroke. And you wanna do that throughout the entire scale there. As with all these, play slower if you're a beginner and play faster if you're more intermediate and you can work on your speed while staying accurate. Just work on whatever speed's comfortable for you. Do that a few times and that'll just get your hands moving and smoothing and grooving. And then finally, to end up our warm up, we're gonna work on some bar chords. If you're still a beginner and your normal chords are still difficult, you can end your practice session here and start adding in the bar chords once you become more comfortable with it. But if you're an intermediate player, this one's for you. And we're just gonna do the same exercises as we did with our normal chords, but now on bar chords. So I'm just gonna play the four primary bar chord shapes. I'm gonna move from A and F to a B minor, to a C, and then end on an A minor. So if you play these four shapes, that's gonna cover all your basic bar chord shapes so that you're gonna be able to easily move these up and down the fretboard. If you don't know the theory behind that, then that's for another video, but if you just do these when they come across, it'll be a lot easier to play bar chords. All we're gonna do here is the same exercise we started with with chords is you're gonna play each of them once before switching and then just repeat that a few times. And just repeat that for a little bit to really work on that bar chord strength. Speed's not important here, just work on getting them nice and smooth and go at whatever pace you're comfortable with. and so on. And then again, just play that for a minute before moving on to the final exercise of our warm up, which is individually picking the strings and then playing the chord on these same four bar chord shapes. And that's all there is to it. You just want to play that a few times. Again, remember that if your chords buzz or you get some wrong notes, 
and readjust your fingers until you get it right. Get your chord ringing out smoothly. Take this nice and slowly. Accuracy is the goal of this one. And then work on switching between those chords. Again, if you're new or a beginner of guitar, it's gonna be real tough to do the bar chords, so leave this out, out until then. But once you're ready to add them in and start working on them, that's gonna be a great addition to your practice. And there you have it. That is your full daily practice routine. Now, it might have been a little bit tough to get through this first time, but as you get to know these exercises, you'll be able to go through this a lot smoother. And remember, you only wanna spend a minute or two on each of these exercises to keep it fast and quick and work on a good variety of all the different skills that you need to play guitar. If you do this practice session every day, then I promise in a month from now or two months from now, it's gonna be way faster and you're gonna find it much easier to do just everything you're gonna do on guitar because we've kind of covered all the core bases of what you actually need and are gonna come across in different songs. If you learned something from this video, please hit that thumbs up button and let me know in the comments below and make sure to subscribe if you haven't already to get access to all my newest videos right when I post them. And if you are a beginner guitarist and you're still struggling with your chord changes and your strumming is not that smooth, maybe your chords are buzzy and sloppy and they just don't quite work the way you want them to, then you should try joining my 14 day chord challenge, which is gonna guide you through all the things that you know to play chords smoothly, efficiently, and have them just sound nice every time you play. So you can pick up your guitar and play around the campfire. So you can just enjoy it and have fun with it instead of finding it stressful and difficult. So click on the link in the description below to check out the 14 day chord challenge, which is just gonna guide you through all the things you know to playing guitar smoothly and clearly. Check that out, link in the description below, and I'll see you in the next video.